Do you think Hogan wanted you to come in just so he could get his WrestleMania six back, his yes. win back? You? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean, come on, is that is that sick? Yeah. I mean, that is just, that's hilarious, man. Welcome to OSW Review, the old-school wrestling podcast, filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines, show by show, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is your boy, Jay Hunter. Join us ever with V-Von, sir. What's the crack? Who is he? Uh, it's WCW Nitro, the night after Halloween Havoc 98, and it's coming up right now. Holy neon green bins, brother Nero. Oh, see. Mm. Another day. What about it? Another dollar. Yeah, so what? Another dollar? No, I'm not giving it to you. Another though. OSW Yay! tattoo. Check what oh, Joey oh, Joe oh, Paragon got. Oh. oh, oh, I love this. That's an impressed sound. That's the most oh. impressed I think I've heard you sound in ages. I love them all. I love them all. Don't get so me more wrong. than others. <laughs> <laughs> It's just I haven't seen anything like this, or nor did I even consider that this would be an option. Because, as you know, when we hit 50, I'm going to get one. And this could have been what I got. That's, oh, wow. that's, how, oh, much, that's wow. how much I like. Joey Paragon, mate. You've done it. This, to me, looks like the OSW letters on a TNA-style logo. Oh, yeah. So is this the sign that we use for the TNA arc? The yeah, OSW, yeah? yeah? yeah. Mm. Looks great. I really, really like it. Yeah, yeah. awesome job, mate. Mm. I, I like, love how esoteric it is as well. Like, it's very TNA, yeah, very yeah, OSW. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty. Joey Paragon at Off Color Jojo, and he's given us his boy stable. Number so, six. Something that. you should know about this stable. It is an all TNA stable. Oh, this is catnip. It's great. It, this guy is really going up in my estimation. You know that. Not that he was low in my <laughs> estimation. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, lads. Ink, ink. Ooh. Ooh so, uh, Shannon Moore yeah. and the other one is tougher. And, uh, Jesse O'Neill. So Jesse Neal. Jesse Neal. Yes. <laughs> Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore with the... Dilly guy. Very book a book of Dilly Gaff. Holy God. On a you chain, about this. possibly. Yeah, I think it was oh, on yeah. a chain. Oh, yeah. It got more than that. He got a belt made. What do you think? Shannon Moore has his own belt. The belt of Dilly Gaff. It's really not horrible. What the fuck's Dilly Gaff? Do I look like I give a fuck? Ah. Do that way too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember Ink Ink. And Jesse Neal, unless I'm very much mistaken, was a Marine before he was in TNA, I think. That's right. Why is your memory of Ink Ink so good, Steve? <laughs> That's terrifying. Uh, okay, who else we got? Number five, the Prince Justice Brotherhood. Who, who's in the PJB? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, of course. It's the way you said it, Steve. Of course, it's Shark Boy Curry Man of Super Eric. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's hot. Yes. He's spicy. He, he tastes, tastes great. great. <laughs> Curry man. <laughs> we just kind of went into a, what's your face yeah, name yeah, there. Candace, yeah, yeah. Super Eric sucks. He was stupid enough that like he was tag champions, but he wouldn't admit he was Eric, and so he just had to relinquish the belt instead. Yeah, he gave it back to Jim Cornette. Yeah. It, was it was funny. No, you laughed. At the oh, time. I hate you. Super no, you laughed. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm when having none of it. Having none of it. Maybe he was laughing at him though. No, I can tell when Jay's laughing. Oh, he Somebody. was laughing. You're probably <laughs> jangling your keys. You know? <laughs> uh, favorite Shark Boy? Hoopla? Well, of course, his debut. 
Oh, when he wakes up from the yeah. coma. Well, hell yeah. The next time you stick that thermometer up my ass, there's going to be hell to pay, you son of a bitch. And that's the bottom line, because Shark Boy said so. Obviously, favorite Curry Man thing. He was in the Feast of Fired match, and he opens the briefcase and he gets fired. So he was being escorted from the building, and he's like, What, what? I got the Forex Championship, yeah? I, I got Forex Championship? And he's like, Roran, give me one last chance. I rob you! <laughs> <laughs> It's a match I get. Fire oh, championships. God. What? What? No, no understand. Fired. No, I'm sorry. You're, you're gone. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no, no. It's not about it. I'm wait, so wait, sorry, no. Green Man. Wait, wait, wait. I rub you, oh, man. I rub you. Please, one more dance. Rest oh. dance. Run it. Sorry, Run it. Save me. Oh, Save God. me. Ah. Number four. Consequences Creed. Yeah. Mm, now yeah. Xavier Woods. In TNA, very solid. A solid hand, if you will. But I wasn't into the big boxing gloves and all that jazz i thought he looked like a fool what turned me sour against him is because he prevented me well in my head at the time watching pac-man jones wrestle because oh, remember yeah, 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 Pac-Man jones. it was him and or truth yeah, or, yeah. or ron killings were a tag team but it was supposed to be pac-man mm. and but because uh, he couldn't actually wrestle yep. so they got in consequences for eagerly yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah he could throw a football at you though <laughs> 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 I love it. Number three, Q-Kip. Yeah, what do you remember? If there's one word when you think Q-Kip, what oh, is it, it? I can't even hyphenate it. It's two words. Uh, Tory. Belts. I was thinking Tory Wilson. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tory Wilson's attire, basically. Oh, that was the other thing. But pre-Tory Wilson attire, his ring entrance, one word. Megastar. Bouncy. Presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, so yeah, he's in The Beautiful People. Vel Vel Holler and... Uh, Angelina Love. Oh, Steve. He's currently wrestling in AEW with his two sons. Mm. And I don't know if he's over 60 or he's like around the age of 60. He's still one of the biggest dudes on the entire roster. He's a monster of a man. Number two, JB Jeremy Boris. Ah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. wow. He's, First time boy. Uh, no, I'm going to say he's not an allowed boy. Oh, wow. He's, You're he's, taking him out. He's too special. He's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I think uh, Joey would take good care of JB. You know, uh, you know exclusive boy? Uh, no? no. I tried. Okay, Joey, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to say Jeremy Borash, after Mean Gene, the greatest to ever do that job. Correct. Mm. But he also does so much more. Mm. So in, in a way, I think I'd argue that he's more valuable than Mean Gene was. Agreed. Legend. Number one, bottom boy. Ooh, this is a big one. The Monster Abyss. Doing this is. <laughs> Did they ever hold the mic up to him when he was doing the pose? <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, letting air out. Now I'm in two minds because he was a TNA World Champion, but the method in which he won it, he had. He beat Sting by DQ. Yeah, and the title changed hands by DQ because uh, Sting, whatever, threw him off this. He took a bump, mm-hmm. right, basically, right, right. and won the belt by <laughs> getting beaten up. So I think that's very boy worthy. He also yeah. did have the like. Uh, do you remember when like Hogan gave him his like ring? <laughs> yeah, get in, get in. Yeah, uh, 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 in, he's in a boy. He's a scamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and only two of those members have special rings. Yeah. I meant our wedding rings. Can you read out the stable? Who has Joe got? Stable from bottom to tippy top. Ink Ink. The Prince Justice Brotherhood. Consequences so Creed. Away with the multiple boy parent. Yeah, yeah, that's clever. Yeah. Consequences Creed. Cute Kip. Jeremy Borash. And the Monster Abyss. That was, of course, that was my favorite ever boy stable because it's TNA. Classic OOC era TNA. Thank Cheers, you, mate. Thanks Fucking beauty. Time for Daydrew. 
October 26, 1998, Monday Nitro from the America West Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Commentators are Shivante, Tanay, and Zabisco for the first half, Larry being replaced by Brain from Saturn's match onwards. This Nitro garnered a monstrous 5.06 rating, beating out Roz 4.48. No doubt helped by the following. Shivani explains the pay-per-view snafu from last night. The systems went down. <laughs> <laughs> We're not giving you the entire replay for free. That's madness. You saw 11 of those matches. But around 9pm tonight, we will show you the entire DDP Goldberg bout from Halloween Havoc. Nice. Holy God, what a treat. Great idea as well to give people like an hour to tell their mates, tune in. Mm. DDP Goldberg's yeah, happening. Clever. Uh, Larry muses on the technical problems. Wait till the YK2 bug hits in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the KY2 bug hits in the year 2000. With that in mind, we're going to go to the ring to start action. Stevie Ray versus Kenny Chaos, one half of the silver clad jobbers high voltage. My first words here are, lol, the fucking state of it. <laughs> he looks like a wrestler, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, there's no doubt. He's like a humorous clone. It's exactly what I have written down here. Like, son of Hugh Morris. Immediate brawl to the outside. I mean, we are talking like microseconds here. They have nothing. Chaos takes over, you know, gets in a few power moves and hits a very nice jumping shoulder tackle off uh, Brett's rope. Worker, worker. <laughs> Buff runs out, throws the slapjack to Stevie Ray, hits Kenny Chaos with it, and then wins with a very weird looking pedigree. I would not want to take that. Showed his true black and white cowardly colors. Last night, but here's a cover after the other slapjack put on. It's over. Mm, I enjoyed the bean-filled whack bonk of the uh, slapjack <laughs> in 208. Yeah, shockingly, Rick Steiner comes out, who has a spare tag title, remember? Ask Kenny to be his partner versus the Noe as his partner's <laughs> out with a shoulder injury. And he's like, yeah, of course, Rick, I'm very available. I'll just clear, <laughs> clear the calendar, do you know? And he looks at it, and the calendar just says nothing, nothing, nothing. Like, I'm just going to take out the G and place it with apostrophes. <laughs> it's very much like me going to see the house show in 94, where the first match was Diesel versus Virgil. And I was like, oh my God, it's not going to get any better than this. <laughs> and then the I next match it. was like HBK and uh, Razor. So it's like, wow. oh, it is going to get better. Rick, could you not have waited a little bit? Kenny Chaos, that's who you're offering it to. He just took the first blimp that flew by. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Sting's probably in the back somewhere. Go talk yeah. to him. I mean, of all of the wrestlers that you're going to try and push, like think of who's having a tough time, right? And who you could spin off into a decent angle. Like Raven has been losing a lot. You know, you could have done something with him. You know, he's trying to prove himself that he's worthy. What a mark. Saturn was super hot coming off the feud with the flock, wearing his sex clothes now, doing fucking <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Rather than coming out and splooging on the first guy that he fucking sees, <laughs> how about he comes out and he'll watch young wrestlers every week. <gasps> he'll oh, he'll, that's great. Yes. he'll, yes. he'll come out to the ramp, fold his arms, watch someone, and if they win, he'll go, hmm, impressed face. <laughs> I have to say, if he waited yes. just a little bit longer, Booker T returns. Yeah, and tag he, team specialist. Yeah, exactly. And Stevie Ray's with the NWO, so, yeah. you know, it'd be perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and you picked... No, he's like, no, you picked Kenny Kale. I've already got it. I <laughs> rang my man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's it. That's it. Kenyon versus Prince Ikea. Let's give it a try. Who's better than Kenyon? No! No! That's wrong! The worst part of the match is uh, Canyon hits a neck breaker and they get their timing wrong. Ikea comes down and like the back of his head bangs off his shoulder and you can see him like, ah. I was like, oh, it looks really sore. Canyon takes a nice backdrop on the mats outside from on top of the ring steps. Uh, that looked really painful. Something I wouldn't be doing in a throwaway match in the first 20 minutes on Nitro. For a Prince Ikea. Absolutely ridiculous. They go back in the ring. Canyon hits the flatliner. He gets the quick win. Absolutely nothing match. Mm. Reverse to trying to backslide. No share, buddy. Sets him down the flatliner and it will do. Wonderful counter maneuver and it's his 
number one weapon that puts Prince Ikea down. Canyon snuffs out Ikea with a flatliner. Raven's done nothing. He didn't need to interfere as Canyon can squash this guy by himself. So giving though. Yeah, two huge bumps for the old Swedish meatball there. Yeah, Ikea. Swedish meatball. Uh, Favourite bit, Ikea, he jobber jogs to the ring. He's like... <laughs> 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 so sad. Do you think jobbers are told to jog to the ring? Yeah, get out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Either that, you don't get an entrance. Yeah, you'll have to be in the ring. Oh yeah. wow! Fuck no. It's like it's your job to not take any shine for yourself. Yeah. You have to put it all on him. And if that requires t-shirts and jogging, then that's what you gotta <laughs> do. <laughs> Backlash. <laughs> Let's hear it for the Four Horsemen! Oh, yeah! In ring, Mean Gene welcomes the Four Horsemen. Dino is the worst dressed as he's just in a t-shirt. The rest of the lads are in either collars or suit jackets. Oh, we've only got four guys. Flair says, Ooh, only one casualty partying in Las Vegas. Mongo's MIA. Yes, McMichael intentionally no-showed Nitro and the house shows afterwards because despite being shit, he wants to re-sign and be assured you're not going to kick him out of the horseman, which he wouldn't. He'd last four years, even bringing in homecoming queen wife Deborah. Besides which, he's a legit NFL Super Bowl legend and most importantly, one of Flair's mates. He'd be back on Thunder warning off the Luo from Dino. (laughs) I love it. You're on board. (laughs) So, hold on, this is Shoot. Mongo, Shoot said, you have to keep me in the horse. Yeah. Oh, that's so... Carny. Yeah. It's pathetic, really. Yeah. Desperate. Yeah. yeah. Part of me likes the hustle, you know? Carnality. Still, you know, it's a bit cheeky. Trying to keep us off the television program. Bischoff, it's not working, brother. The horsemen are here. Flair cuts a promo. Says that Bischoff has come on hard times lately. Um, <laughs> that's about it, really. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's <laughs> pretty he, much. He just stops mid yeah. sentence, <laughs> walks uh, off. <laughs> I don't pretty want much. to talk. I don't want to talk. <laughs> All of my notes here are on what Eric said, basically, which is also not much. Says that he underestimated Rick and how much he means to all of the fans. Eric says that the fans all want to see Rick wrestle again and that he's going to give him a match for tonight. It's going to be a midget, right? (laughs) I was convinced it was going to be a fucking dwarf. Actually, uh, Time Magazine ran, they were running a poll at the time for the person of the century. And number three leading the poll was Ric Flair. If you want to know, number two was uh, old uh, Hitler. And uh, number one was old uh, Jesus Christ. How could he be person of the century? That's, they decided they'd pull all three of them, saying that, Christ, he wasn't born in the 20th century. Hitler is Hitler. And um, Ric Flair, you're not a real person. You're a character. So uh, there you go. Who won? Uh, Steve Ballmer. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the father of BK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy in the screen. Good man. Well done. Hey, well done. Hey, well done. Hey, well done. Nitro party tape. Ooh, uh, my favourite guy here is someone, this lad has Buff's haircut and uh, beard. He gave it socks, so I'll give him his due. Mm. And I will have to say that even though their Nitro party looked kind of lame, there were women here. (laughs) Not only men with the fruity booty. Well, I apologize for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Schnell meet the art things, huh? I must get back to Dan Centrum in Stuttgart in time to see Kraftwerk. Fun boy, Alex Reid versus already in the ring, Barry Horowitz. Okay, so it's 1998. The last time we would have seen Barry Horowitz would have been in 1995. Man, uh, the, the road has ravaged this man. He's aged about 15 years. I thought he was still in great shape, though. He's kind of he like was Rick Rude shape. style. Not Rick Rude, the other guy. Bobby Rude kind of shape. Bobby Rude, okay. Yeah. And uh, he does his taunt. The old... Mm. Yeah. Well, Alex Wright did a sweet what time that? about it. Alex Wright, he avoids a monkey flip and he walks on Barry's head. That's kind of cool. Then Wright drop kicks Barry off the top rope where he lands on his like neck and face. It looks, yeah, it wasn't a great yeah, yeah, bump. It looks really bad. Uh, that's it dropkick cutting off Horowitz reverse neckbreaker and it's off to the disco tech after 2.48 well, his head snapped one of his standing moves in a disposal of Barry Horowitz yeah 
So three matches in and all just kind of useless, time-wasty two or three minute matches. Mm. Next up is Wrath versus Sick Boy. Sick Boy. Who will control the monster Ming? Well, Wrath did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, we've been asking a question for months, and that is who is going to be able to control the uncontrollable monster Ming? I thought Sick Boy looked really bad here. Like, he looked mega green, like, almost lost. And he's in there with someone who's not really a vet, and so he's not going to be able to take charge and whip this Sick Boy into shape and, you know... Make him become a sick man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I literally don't have any notes from any moves. I'm going to guess he does some kind of top rope clothesline or shoulder breaker and then (laughs) hits the uh, meltdown. Yeah, very wow. Raven's bird with a floaty jumping reverse elbow. You know, it's kind of a Tory Wilson there. Uh, Watching this, all I can think of is Raven's bird, Raven's bird. (laughs) 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 It's ratty little jeans. No cell sick boys, shoulder block, meltdown, pump handle slam, sans bumming, jobber squash in 252. Oh, so I actually did call the finish (laughs) knowing it. Up to the shoulder, drives him down to the canvas. Best part is Shivani keeps saying Wrath will mow the competition. He'll mow them down. Mow. 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 And uh, get well soon to mow. Uh, hopefully he's feeling better. He had some like liver troubles and hmm. uh, he was in hospital. For I'm it. really, really happy to hear that he's like out of hospital and he's doing better. Fucking love mow. Should we give him a, a, one, a mow on one, two, three? One, two, three. Mow. mow. From the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, it's time. Replay of Goldberg DDP. Fair juice of them. WCW played the entire DDP and Goldberg match, including the entrances. Uh, is Buffer getting paid again? <laughs> <laughs> Giving everyone a free, high-quality pay-per-view match is a very nice gesture. Less nice is hardline marketing it, like self-fellatio here, telling you it's the right thing to do, and we're the only company that would do it because we realise how great our fans are. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, God, that's so slimy. Like... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Giving fans an hour to tell their friends that this match was happening worked. This is the number one most watched WCW match in history. The segments got a 7.18, which is equal to uh, 5.37 million homes and 7.782 million viewers, getting a 10.2 share. Over 10% of all cable viewers in America were watching DDP Goldberg. But cable is tiny compared to network, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. but it's still a massive amount of people. Obviously, network television and Saturday night's main event, NBC, uh, Hogan, Andre, 33 million. Yeah. So, you know, but like this is a great accomplishment for uh, cable. Uh, yeah, absolutely is. Backstage with former outsiders, just like you said in the last episode, Nash calmly explains the hall, I didn't pin you because it wasn't about competition or winning. I win when I get my friend back. I was like, that's so lovely. That's so nice that you don't hear. And Scott Hall meekly agrees, saying, listen, I hit a wall, you know. And uh, they both kind of talk so quietly. And WCW doesn't have a boom mic. So Gene has to run up and talk, you know, point the mic in their face. It's so bad. I don't know what your deal is. That's cool. I went through a lot of of hard times. I know, I guess last night, I I guess I reached a wall. uh. Even better, they shake hands, they make up, Giant comes in and... (laughs) Hold on, Hall didn't swerve Nash. (laughs) Oh, no. No, come on. It's all we no. get in this company. It's all, It's a heat company. <laughs> you can't have good things. But hold on. I have no issue with a swerve if it's built from something. But he, he swerved after, what, 30 seconds of turning baby? Yeah, yeah. So no, the last thing I'm not expect. having it. I'm not having it. <laughs> That's not a swerve then. Just cancel the last 30 seconds. Just in. Get about it. Moments oh. ago, we thought oh. it Holy smokes, they threw him to the wall! Reach the wall and right through it! Nitro Girls music video. Night, 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 night. 
Uh, you sure give Nitro Girls a lot of time without actually doing something with them. And I was going through Nitros in the future. Like, what are you doing with the Nitro Girls? And I was like, oh, it's like, let's go to a upstairs 70s funky boutique. Uh, the funny hat. Funny hat. Montage. Like. Don't come in this changing room. <laughs> but, but Jay, they're, they're loving life. <laughs> <laughs> Put them on roller skates. Like. Yeah. <laughs> they also hawk a calendar. There you go. <clears throat> waka waka. Waka waka. Hulk, Bischoff and Giant. No, it's the extended black and white out for an interview. They have Virgil, they have Steiner, Scott Hall manages to pelt it from the back. And... Horace Hogan! Ooh, man of the hour. (laughs) (laughs) It's Horace Hogan's official induction into Hollywood NWO. Horace Hogan, with all the love in my heart, in the honor of the NWO, you're welcome, you're for life, and we love you because your blood is my blood, and the Brotherhood's blood. Hulk's happy to have these lads watching his back as the NWO goes beyond prayers, training, and stinking vitamins. Put your soul and spill your blood like wine. He welcomes the most valuable member of the NWO. Who gets to talk? Horror says... Nothing. He doesn't talk. Just the group for life. Uh, His induction, his moment to shine, didn't get to talk. He's already nobody. (laughs) Wow, 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 Fucking geek. I can't. This is his big moment. You are never, you are introduced. No one's going to care for you week two. So this is it. <sighs> Nothing. It's, you know, I'm in two minds about this because you're right. At least if you're going to invest your entire company, your, your entire 1998 into this guy, basically, at least give him a feud, try him out. But they wouldn't even do that. I don't understand if you you didn't get him to talk, so it means you have no faith in him. You have no, what's changed in the last you know sixteen hours? <laughs> you know, <laughs> either you have faith in him and you get him to talk, or you have no faith in him and he shouldn't be here. Yeah, you can't have both. You know, it's basically just a picture of what this group was. It's a total bollocks wank session just for Hogan. It's all about Hogan. Like, no one else matters. They're just numbers. They're just pawns, soldiers to die on the front line. The ultimate goal is to keep Hogan on top in both kayfabe and shoot. Man, it was long in the tooth at this point. And how much longer did this go for? Like, did this end in like 2000 or something? There was periods where there was less wacka and more woe, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but there was like NWO 2000, yeah, with uh, Bret Hart and Jarrett. And oh my Mac. God. That was very short lived. But, but Hogan wasn't in that. No. Uh, big hang, I hate his face. It's just big hangdog, gormless expression. Like he screams like he shouldn't be here. Even amongst Stevie Ray and Virgil, he's, he's shitting his cacks like, you know. Speaking of looks. <laughs> It's Perry Saturn versus Eddie Guerrero. Wow, future radical versus radical. Get in. Saturn, very sexy bicycle chain waistcoat, complimenting his purple sunglasses. And this is the one he wore. It's the same one. Yeah, yeah. View, yeah. And his biker ha- ha- head kerchief. <laughs> Oh, he got rid of the beret. Yeah, yeah he, he's not wearing it. Eddie is decked out in his Luo gear. Mm-hmm. So Eddie, he's jacked in great shapes. Uh, how do you feel about him wrestling in his t-shirt? Uh, it, nobody should ever wrestle in a t-shirt, Jay. Just no, no. Absolutely reason. no one. Like, look at Andre. Andre was hardly in great shape. He didn't wear a t-shirt. Yeah, I agree. And to make it even worse, I think I'd argue that the t-shirt that he wore was so big that it made him look small mm, in it yeah like yeah. It, it was swimming on him. yeah it's like a nighty you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> like like got raven's bird would wear to <laughs> yeah, bed yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh boy there's the power advantage we told you about the head he came away with a great andre kick and a pickup two lands you can tell their mates bumping like crazy for each other my first line is there Ooh, finally something decent now Watch it end in four minutes with a luo running. <laughs> Eddie was moaning to the ref that Perry Saturn was pulling his hair. So, you know, he was a bit of lying. 
and he wouldn't add the cheating and stealing until a few years later. Saturn, I actually thought he did an amazing job selling his knee so well that I was actually like, oh, did he actually hurt himself? But no, he just happens to be a really fucking great wrestler that this company does nothing with. Lovely face buster by Perry Saturn. Hits a Northern Lights suplex for a great two count. T-Bone suplex, Falcon Arrow. And then as he's going for the DVD... Luo come out, DQ, beat down. I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Now Eddie's going to take care of Saturn. Uh, the Mexabras give Saturn a DQ win. More Luo members come out. They beat him down seven on one. And I was like, that's too many of you. It just makes you look weak at that point. It takes seven of you to batter him. And um, they focus on Arturo Flores, a.k.a. Spider, Eddie's real life mate, which went nowhere. But my God, dude with a massive blow drive voluminous mullet that comes out. He's just. <laughs> is that dandy? Is, it's is it? El Dandy. That's El Dandy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Only four months away from a showdown with Bret Hart. <laughs> a promo that gets snuffed out. They never wrestle. Sadly. Aww, yeah, oh my god, come I on! I can't believe he's such a jam up guy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty pounds. Who are you to, to to doubt El Dandy? Mrs. Bagwell is with Mean Gene Okerlund sporting a baby blue onesie. A moo A moo Thank you, sir. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Steiner called you an old bag. What you gonna do, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Stara Torba. It's Polish for old bag. Oh, wow. Mm. She says, I'm mom, mother on a mission. Oh. Uh, and I'm tired of yeah. being nice. After multiple swerves, she's had enough of buff. Eh? Ooh, and is she gonna swerve? And join the end of it. Yeah. Oh, it'd be amazing. <laughs> Can you have like the end of the O theme, but it's like the Golden Girls? <laughs> Makes it. Give it a go. I just, yeah, I just want to sing the Golden yeah, yeah, Girls. It's a great now. song. Yeah, yeah. Banger. I used to love that TV yeah, yeah. show when I was younger. Ian <laughs> Ratted everyone you knew. You would see the biggest <laughs> present would be from me. And the card inside would read, thank you for being the noir. Waka wow. And he selected chaos of a high voltage to be his partner. And now... They will defend the tag team belts against the giant Stevie Ray on its matchup. Uh, waka waka, hey, hey, giant and Stevie Ray versus St- uh, Rick Steiner and Kenny Chaos. So happy for Kenny Chaos. He is officially a WCW tag team champion. His only reign, obviously, he's preliminary talent. Talk about right place, right time. Giant gets his leg up very high, very fast to blindside Chaos. Also has a nice bear hug and <laughs> squeezing. <laughs> Big Show decides to leave the ring to brawl with Chaos, and Rick just jobs out Stevie Ray, no problem. Big back body drop, top rope bulldog, kaboom, 318. It's a Steiner bulldog for the top! And a Steiner cover, and Rick Steiner there, and Chaos! I think they did a fairly good job with it. The fans liked it. Rick is crazy over, like, despite the terrible booking and the Chucky and everything, the fans love him. So, uh, I I dig this. Mm. How did this rain end, you ask? In January, Rick would get legit injured and then that's it. Vacated? Yeah. And they'd hold a tournament the next month in February and it'd be won by Windham and Perfect. The old West Texas Rednecks. State of it. (laughs) Oh, man. I was having a look on Nitro. I was like, oh, give us a bit of backstage blast. Backstage blast. What have you got? And I was like, what did they fill it with? Kenny Chaos promo. Oh, I've seen it. And I was like, I should splice this in. And then I was like, it's so bad. It'll bring down the quality of the show. <laughs> He's like everything that you think a big, dumb wrestler is in real life you know so he's asked a softball question you know how's it feel to be a champion and to be tagging with a former tag team legend and, and he's like yeah let me tell you something bro it feels great i love it uh i look up to rick steiner he's a very good wrestler i like him it feels great i look up to rick uh it's great and i look up to rick <laughs> 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 it's 
just like, oh my god. And it's like, well, what are you gonna do when your mate uh, Roydy Rage comes back? I'm just gonna take it one day at a time. Uh, I don't really know what the future holds, but uh, just want to know that uh, I really look up to Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I have to live day by day, each each as it comes to me. So uh, right now, my main focus is on defending belt with Rick Stein and the Dogface Gremlin. Bischoff joins the commentary booth because Flair's match is up next and gives us literally five minutes of Bash of the Beach 94 footage. The finish of Flair Hogan and haha, that counts as Flair wrestling tonight. His match was on Nitro. I thought he was going to come out here and wrestle. No, I don't think he could pass a physical. He can't wrestle in person. What's wrong with him? Oh, what's wrong with him? He's Ric Flair. There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> Funny swerve, but best not to do it on the same night you had to show PPV footage. Yeah. With uh, DP Goldberg. Mm. Kidman, the Cruiserweight Champion versus Hoventood, 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 Hoventood. Tons of cruiserweight exchanges, no selling after the bell. Heenan says, you're right, they never stop. <laughs> Wheelbarrow suplex, which I thought was a bit lawnmower you know, a bit landscapey. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you stay away from all kind of garden utensils, you know, <laughs> these connotations here. <laughs> Twist into Brett's rope, Herc and Rana can't seal it, but Kidman reverses into a sky high and follows up with a 450, and that does it. Five minutes, 55. Could be, could be, it is! I see Kidman wrestle every week on Nitro and Thunder, and I see Hoovy on Thunder every week, and they pretty much have the same matches. Like, they're good, but I've seen it a million times. I will say, Hoovy lost to Disco clean last night. It was like one of the only matches that didn't have interference or was a DQ, and he's rewarded with a Cruiserweight title mm-hmm. match, which is a bit bollocks. Mm. So, yeah, what was the point of, in his match versus Disco? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the the shoot aspect of it is Hoovy is a number two cruiserweight, getting more focus because he's just re-signed for around two hundred grand a year. Bischoff is holding out on pushing Eddie Benoit and the other lads until they sign a new contract, and you too can job to Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know how this works out, yeah. Eventually, though, yeah. I mean, we're it's it's a good bit away before they leave. Or still, what like about. 13, 14 months away. Yeah. But Kidman gets to have a run against Hulk Hogan. Oh, yeah. He put him over, brother. <laughs> yeah! What a slap yeah! in the face yeah! of Hulk Hogan. You are looking, fans, at uh, the first two videos available, stores everywhere in the WCW NWO Superstar Series. Sting Unmasked and the Macho Man Randy Savage, the man behind the madness. Shivante Hawks, two VHS home videos. I was like, oh, man. I want more of this live shilling. He's like, here, buy the fucking tape. <laughs> <laughs> buy my shit. Yeah. Especially if it's by Tra Entertainment. <laughs> and uh, she said that she loved Marcus. Cut the music! Scott Steiner with Buff Bagwell interview. Cut the music! It's like, the, the music was off when he said it. Oh, yeah, but which music was it? Oh, it was the Wacker and the Wacker. I actually think we've we've heard the song about eight times so far, and we're only about halfway through this show. Mm. Unexpected nice things Scott Steiner says. He says, Bagwell, we're not only both in the NWO for life, we're friends for life. It's like, aw. That's a bit sweet for a heel couple. Could be. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say, it's a little too sweet. Do you love me for my mind? Or do you love me for my body? Obviously, it's Big Papa Pump, so he comes out in the first two minutes of his promo are bragging about how he's a great goer and he loves shagging, right? He's a top shagger. <laughs> and uh, care about him. But... <laughs> <laughs> But then he kind of gets a bit pensive and he goes like, I sometimes worry if they just love me for my body or if they really love me for my mind. I was like, where is this coming from, Scott? I want a straight question. Why the match that the referee started was not the same referee 
that ended the match. He calls out J.J. Dillon and confronts him about the finish last night. Scott Steiner, he has a real hard time, man. Like, you just need him cutting promos, hot-dogging about himself and talking smack about his opponents. You can't have him explain WCW booking. It's too twisty-turny. And he gets all jumbled up and it takes a long time. Ah, fuck it, let's just beat up J.J. Dillon. <laughs> uh, and he's like, let me get my glasses on before you beat me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's putting JJ in the Steiner recliner. He can't take this. The Vince. man's wearing glasses. Look at that. Warrior! Bang, bang. Uh, I am the warrior. It's L. Jim. L. Jimmy Wiggy. What's <laughs> a final WCW promo? Oddly, he's in his wrestling gear. Yeah. Wow, and he finally learns how to cut a promo at regular speed. Last night, Hogan, you had the opportunity to face the challenge like a man, and you failed. Quick, like it was like two minutes. Yeah, yeah what do you think, anyway? It, fine. Which is a good compliment, really. Yeah, that's the best promo he's had. Yeah, yeah, in WCW. No, no, we, I, loved, I oh, still yeah, love yeah. the first one. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> like he basically gets over his point that he lost, but Hogan cheated, which means that Hogan can't actually beat me. And it's always going to haunt him that he's not the better man. I was like, oh, look at you getting your point across in, a you know. here in fashion. Yeah, <laughs> well, well done, mate. Yeah. It's a shame you couldn't have done it in week one and two before the fans <laughs> turned on you. No, week one is good, Steve, yeah. remember? Seems as if no formal introduction is going to be necessary. And a b- and pinfall doesn't change it. Sour Grape Stingo says there's a difference between beating a man and actually beating him. And the bullshit finish doesn't change anything. Waka waka. <laughs> Hogan comes to the ring with Waka, Woe, and Hey Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Warrior sends them all packing, sacrifice horse, clean house big show. Hogan gets in on it and takes a shoulder block. Even Bischoff gets a taste. And that's it. So they give Warrior his heat pack and he's leaving. At this stage, they must know he's leaving the company. He would have gone longer, but it's like a couple of weeks in, it's like, okay, no, well, let's cut it, let's cut it. Like, I did read conflicting information on saying that, how did you get Warrior to lose in that match with Hogan? I said, oh, we'll link you a new deal. And it was like... I sign- want that in writing. Yeah, he should have signed the deal first and then do the match then, yeah. you know? They were like, well, what do you got for me? Uh, Ed Leslie, Horace Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know... Yeah, yeah, irons yeah, in the fire, yeah. you know, fingers and pies. <laughs> <laughs> hands around like propeller caps like <laughs> <laughs> now you talk about the MO of the new world order here's the prime example Stevie Ray Vincent Horace Hogan and here comes the leader of the OWF the warrior on his way to the ring this wasn't Jim's final appearance though <laughs> two weeks later he saves Ed Leslie from Horace Hogan <laughs> The damsel in distress <laughs> and that's just it his, that's it that's his is, final ever appearance running out to save <laughs> to save Ledley. ed leslie yeah against horace from Hogan. horace Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. what a fart of an ending <laughs> you don't get hogan you get ed leslie <laughs> you, you yeah you get hey, hogan you, you get hogan, hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't worry tonight no, i didn't tonight <laughs> you're getting hogan <laughs> Should have looked at the contract. <laughs> it said, ah, Hogan. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. L-W-N, gentlemen. Is the power. I am the warrior. Yes, you are. And more wrestling action live on Nitro next. Plus. Tickets available to Trans World Zone box office. You can also meet Goldberg and the Nitro Girls. The TW- <laughs> <laughs> it's Scott Squared, Scott Steiner, and Scott Hall versus oh, Wolfpack's Lex and Conan. Uh, wait, how isn't Steiner suspended for attacking an official? He just battered J.J. Dillon. 
Well, you gotta bend the rules occasionally, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know how how things are. Or it is like JJ didn't have to sign off on <laughs> all suspensions. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Immediate brawl to the outside. Some Bella and throws their popcorn into the air. Hey, uh, Conan misses a clothesline, but Scott sells it anyway, killing Kayfabe. Impeccable Lex hits a running forearm. Torture rack? No, schmals. Conan gets a folding chair, but it's the fanciest, thickest padded one. Mm. Really nice, you know. Um, it's like a timekeeper's <laughs> like, one. Yeah. Pl- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds of a torture rack. Ah, that's enough. Go to break, and that's it. What a great fight! What did the referee get clipped? Did we miss that? I... Fans. We've got to take a commercial break. This fight's still going on in the ring, though. Kick him like a dog. Kick him. Oh, the finish happened during the break. Uh, I like, I didn't even, like <laughs> was this a match? Was it just a brawl? Like, when it came back, it was just over. Yeah, the match was thrown out after four and a half minutes, meaning it was a... Oh, no contest! To... Yeah, I think it thumbs up. No, 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 no. I was mentally done at this point. I was like, every time a match begins, the first words I have written is like, I wonder how long until the match ends by DQ. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been wacko. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. But they were there. They were physically there. What more can you ask for? And it's time for your main event. <laughs> It's your Monday Nitro. Diamond Dallas Page versus United States Champion Brett the Hitman Hart. And it was Brett Hart using a little well-known strategy, and that is to beat up your opponent in the back before the match starts to help him win the U.S. title. DDP is fucking awesome. He wrestles with speed, just gives it socks, and it's something that's greatly missing from all WCW television bouts. He's not the biggest name, he's not the biggest star, but he's the best presence when it comes to putting on matches. Bit of chain wrestling and reversals result in a stalemate. Headbutt to the knob. Hey! (laughs) It was his lower (laughs) abdomen. Ric Flair-like added leverage for the headlock. DDP with a super safe flapjack. Brett responds with going beyond Brett's rope for a superplex. Sweating bullets seeing that. Uh, (laughs) Shite armbar takedown. Double Mickey shot to Paige and Mickey J. Brett gets the brass nooks. Tough shit. Diamond cutter. One, two, three. And DDP wins to the United States Championship in 1048. One, two. Yeah, I was very, very happy. Uh, as good as Brett is. And, you know, that's one of the greatest of all times. He's not putting on great matches anymore, and it makes me a bit sad. But he cared a bit more than normal because DDP was fired up, and I thought it was fine. I actually thought Brett's way more checked in for this one. Maybe it's just coming off Halloween Havoc, which is one of his worst performances. There was no stalling on the outside. I thought it was like, hey, I'm main eventing with DDP, you know, working boots on, you know, let's take care of business. Poor sport, Brett, Pearl Harbors, or... uh, Canadian, so Port of Vancouver's DDP (laughs) and kills all of his heat. Oh, he's got a chair. Nail buffer while you're there. Brett's rope chair to the sides and he's like, ah, fuck. (laughs) Uh, Goldberg to the rescue and we're out of time. See you later. (laughs) They're out of time before he reaches the ring. Tough shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see the nitro stills next week. (laughs) (laughs) We'll put it on for free. (laughs) One last fuck you. Do you think they automatically cut your legs out from under you the second you were on TV and they saw that Uh, reaction? Yeah. The first 15 minutes was great, man. Did I have all the ideas? No, but it takes a team. It could have worked out really great. So yeah, what do you think of that? Does that sound good to you? It sounds like every episode of Nitro ever. 
I didn't think it was a very good episode of Nitro. I think that the first half of it was just like full of two minute squash matches that no one cared about. Got a bit better towards the end. You know, Brett DDP was better than everything else on the show. I enjoyed Scott Steiner. And that may be it. I was thinking, obviously, it's a little different looking back on it because you have access to the network or Peacock and you can watch the Nitros and the pay-per-views. But at the time, if you were a fan, this would be a must-watch Nitro because it had a Halloween Havoc main event, Flair Hogan from Bash at the Beach, DDP versus Brett for the US title, and what would be Warriors Farewell promo. Yeah. It's pretty important, you know? That's true. And with regards to the Monday Night Wars, Nitro's 83-week streak was broken with Austin and McMahon's match in April, so it's been a couple of months since then. Austin with that uh, very... Look at me! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! God. Oh, my God! God. Since then, it was back and forth between Raw and Nitro. Nitro won this week with 5.06 to 4.48. This is the very last time Nitro would win the Monday Night War undoubtedly because of Warrior, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, DDP Goldberg. But hey, Warrior, you can hot dog about it. Yep. But there you go. But Steve, you got time for Thunder. Boo. I don't even know what this song is. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> random robot yeah. sounds. Twenty ninth of October, nineteen ninety eight, Fontingley Coliseum in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Shavante Brain and Tony the Tiger on commentary. I have the same thing written down, Tony the Tiger. We are coming out of what is arguably the most exciting forty eight hours in the history of this sport, as you said, Tony. Halloween Havoc in Vegas, Nitro out of Phoenix, and then Thunder tonight with two championship belts being contested. Van Hammer gets squashed by Wrath. Yeah, big Hoss match, which I actually liked more than Rat's match on Rats. Wrath. Wrath. <laughs> His match on like Nitro. your elocution there, Steve. Yeah, uh, because the excellence of elocution. Yeah, ooh, ooh, I like it because he doesn't try to do too much. It's just a big Hoss match, kicks and punches and clubs, and Wrath wins with the meltdown. Mm, I like that they say Wrath will be a force to be reckoned with. He won't. <laughs> I just want to say, Van Hammer, he's ripped bushy blonde hair, bottle blonde, like big bang of Ed Leslie off him. You know? You mean Ed Leslie in his current state? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah not yeah. previous. Yeah, like, like disciple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I, can, I can see that. Mm, meltdown and pin and 312. That's just plain scary. That's it, the big three. You can better believe this man, the former television champ, has revenge on his Hollywood Hogan in the NWO. Funley versus Hey, Hey, Here Comped Alex. Right. <laughs> oh man, Steve kicks off with an Ionian nerve grip into a nose pull. Ooh. I flip my shit. It's like, this is added. This is my repertoire. Adding it <laughs> straight in. Finley works the leg. Commentators reduce Finley ended Alex Wright's dad's career to Finley broke his leg. And Heenan has a new name for Steve Wright. Peg Leg Wright. (laughs) That's it. That was the peak. That's the crux of the bout holding the leg. Alex Wright, top rope dropkick. And Nick Patrick takes a bump. Way! A ref bump. Opening card match. The distraction is the window. Or Fwinyog. Finley needs to get a tombstone. And look of the Irish. Look of the Northern Irish prevails. (laughs) In six minutes. Tombstone pile driver! Oh, man! That's it! One, two, anybody! I thought it was a bit better than their pay-per-view match. That's mostly because Finley was breaking out, like, old-school wrestling holes and grappling. But not great. When I see Finley and Alex Wright on the card, I expect greatness. And uh, I did not get greatness, let's. Have they not shown you as a pair that you cannot expect greatness from the two of them. <laughs> they had how, a match on Nitro. What do you need to be convinced at this stage? <laughs> I think they just needed more time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ed Leslie gets two minutes to wrestle one half of disorderly conduct. Jobbers in purple and black shouting, yeah! Oh my god. They're Aldi brand nasty boys. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the state of them. So, they're pushing Ed Leslie now as a babyface on his own. Yes, I but yeah. I don't know how much the push is because the jobbers come out last. <laughs> and, and Ed Leslie runs to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, dude, oh, he's in great shape. Yeah, mm. like He never best, looked better. Best of his career, yeah. yeah. Mm. Tough Tom and Mean Mike. Mm. Yeah. Tough Tom and Mean Mike take a double noggin knocker. Big back body drop. Stone cold stunner. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Got him, and he covers him, and Billy Silverman says, one, two, three. The Disciple continues to win. And watch out from behind. It's me, Mike, of Disorderly Conduct. He's going to get a jawbreaker as well. (laughs) (laughs) Who's doing Leslie's doing a Stone Cold Stunner, you cheeky git. (laughs) Fuck's sake. And do they land on their feet or their knees while they're taking it? I think it's like I'm going to bend over and then, oh, no. and then I'm going to jump no, back. No, no, no. Which They're... is how The Rock always took it, right? Oh, this is the cl- very different. <laughs> Holy shit. Just, You're I comparing the rock. mean Tough Mike to The Tom. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Tough Tom. The Rock. You think you're special. <laughs> you do. You think you're special. Honestly, going to get more heat for this than the time I called Chris Adams a jobber last, you know, last Which time he out. was. I don't care what he did beforehand. On the show, yep. he was a jobber. In 1998, Job. jobber. he was jobbing to Chip Denton. Yes. <laughs> he is a jobber. <laughs> the Chip Denton. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chip Denton, Chip Menton. Uh, at WCW Worldwide. Eddie Guerrero versus Dino Di Malenko. Another radical versus radical. Yeah. Get fucking in. Very, very good uh, wrestling, like a solid television wrestling match. Nothing crazy, but they're both so good at the basics of wrestling, like holes and timing, making everything look good and, you know, look like it hurts, that they can go out there and work arm ringers and rest holes and throw in a suplex, and it's going to be great either way. This man is legit, Eddie Guerrero. And so are you, Brain. Yes, I am. You are the legit loudmouth in our sport. Oh, you are. Into the corner. Watch out. Runs right over him that time. Is that an insult? Mm, Yeah, extremely competent, fast-paced chain wrestling with not much personality. Even harder to get excited when the commentators just talk about other matches, mostly DDP. They're always at it. Eddie injects a bit of colour by jawjacking with a fan outside. He's like, hey, yeah, yeah. He's having a great time and arguably wins the interaction because he does the eh, eh, yeah, to Eddie and then Eddie sods off and it's like, oh shit, the fan won. You Eddie know? should have turned around and done his lame like, yeah. <laughs> kissy bum bum. <laughs> it's the lamest yeah. thing. And puts Dean Malenko down and Eddie knocking the fans here. Dub spot, multiple near falls, and stomp a mud hole. What instead of the uh, Are NWO? You trying to think of a racist term for a mud hole? I, I was, I was, th- <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of a racist term for the NWO theme. Like, how can we Latino up the NWO theme? Ooh. Like instead of waka wa hey hey, what would you have? Death death. Are you with your Spanish? Spanish. Oh yeah. Happy enough. And then, like, you'd have your little uh, guitar. Ding, 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 waka ding, ding. Hey, hey, waka, wo, hey, oh, hey, yeah. waka, 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 hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, the Luau cause a DQ beating up Dino, and the horsemen quickly make a stop to it. Oh, there's Mongo. Strict posture, great posture he has here. Oddly open zipped top, do you have? You know, is it. Yeah, but he's clean shaven. Yeah, like, oh, he it's like doesn't a... have the, the, like, tuft, you know, when he pulls yeah, yeah, the zipper yeah. down and goes, Pff. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or yeah. a little like um, a, a medallion a or something. Yeah, medallion, it, yeah. Has he got like a a Scoopy t shirt? Scoopy, uh, terrible things. I think they were popular ten years ago, where you had a big like V shape 
coming down to your belly almost on your t-shirt very oh, bad oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i no no it's not quite that like uh you can like zip it down a bit just to oh, show okay. the like top of the cleavage yeah, 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 yeah. 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 the cleavage <laughs> <laughs> show his bust line <laughs> still to come two title matches plus scott hall in the nwo and we'll have more action on tbs and thunder right after this time out Chris Jericho versus Disco Inferno. Oh, Jericho, he's so creative. Disco's like, hey, put the TV title around my waist like I deserve. I am a two-time television champion. You're a one-time. That means I'm better than you and you should respect me and give me the belt. I love this. And Jericho does. <laughs> he puts the belt around his waist. He goes to smack him with the belt first and the ref is going, no, 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 you get, you get DQ'd. Um, so he actually puts it on him and then holds up Disco's hand. He's like, yeah, yeah. And then obviously short arm clothesline. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. This is no exception. Oh! Oh! And there's the unexpected. Not quite a squash, but it's hardly competitive, like the result was never in doubt. Disco hot dogs with the Macarena, reversal into Boston Crab, and Jericho retains. It's the Macarena pile driver, turn it to the, the lion tamer, to the center of the ring, and he's tapped out. Sit down, sit down. He's tapped out, it's over. Number 23 B of the jukebox. Jericho is very animated and he's really good and he's getting himself over as a babyface. Like he's been more face-like, I'd say the last two or three weeks. He's getting over and he's awesome. Mm. Yeah, like Lionheart is goofy, but Disco is a goof. Uh, So it's a fun, but nothing TV match. Yeah. Do you like Disco? Do you like his kind of goofishness? I think even as a comedy jobber, he's limited because his goofiness is his song and entrance. It goes no further than that. So he has he, the old L one taunt of the he does yeah. a Sat- Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's kind of it, isn't it? Mm. Any got anything else in terms of gimmick wise? No. Then he just becomes like a mediocre to mid cruiserweight pro wrestler. You know? Yeah, lower than that even. Oh, question. Jericho, when he wins, he does the kind of jump up and click the heels. What do you think? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah it's amazing. Yes, it's yes, great. Yes. What a great way to get heat. Yeah. Do you guys remember the one time, it was, I want to say, like around 2014, 2015, where Randy Orton turned babyface and he won a match and he did the jump <gasps> oh, <yeah>. splits. <laughs> amazing. He did it Hello. once. Yeah, brilliant. Spicy. It was incredible. Spicy. Big, big time. Spicy. Oh, yeah. He was like, yay, I'm the happy baby face. Yeah. You know, I'm going to jump up and do the splits and yeah, freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> Can you freeze frame it on yeah, the splice yes, scene? Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Christian. Okay, yo! Billy Goodman is uh, the B. Bummer is the cruiserweight champion and he's taking on Chavo with Pepe. Chavo goes horsey ride. We're told he's forming the Pepe World Order. <laughs> the Pro. <Whoa. laughs> Chavo Jr., he was talking about forming the PWO, the Pepe World Order. I just think it like, oh yeah, the match is nothing garbage, you know, you don't get spots, lads. Uh, what other horses in wrestling could join this stable? This literal stable. Oh, of the, of the old the Pro. What about uh, Terry Funk? He's a yes. horse man, right? Yeah, no, he has a horse. Who's horse? Terry Funk's horse. It has to okay. be a horse. Yeah. Oh, a phys- an actual, a actual horse. horse. Yeah. The Terry Funk. Uh, Terry Funk's things. horse. Yeah, yeah. Adam Page's horse oh. uh, that he had at the Stadium Stampede. Yes. Uh, oh, take a return at Rumble 2006 with a horse and chariot. Oh, nice. Holy fuck. Yeah. Jeff Jarrett came out on the horse. Ah, oh, in 97 yeah. with country nice. western singer. The right. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> 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 I, I always remember that entrance yeah. at that time in '97 because my dad was watching at the time, and he just turned to me and said, "Do you like this stuff?" What did you say? That's death for a wrestling fan. N- no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I this like. Is, I love wrestling, but it's like, like this is the lamest shit. Like that. My dad quite liked HBK. Like if HBK was on, he'd yeah, kind of yeah. you know, like say the Heartbreak Hotel segments, he'd watch those. Yeah. I mean, I love Taker. Yeah, but like enough. Jeff Jarrett on a horse with JJ LEDs. And, and the, the LEDs are going to kill him. The like, song yeah. sucks so bad, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know what you should have said? And we're like, well, if you hate it, it means it's working. 
<laughs> oh, you little smirk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you remember, the Mountie, his uh, introductory promos, uh, he had a horse. Oh. He was like, I'm the Mountie. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a policeman. The front of the horse is pointing towards Canada because it's beautiful. And he lifts up the back of the horse. Oh, yeah. He pointing like towards good. America. Nice. Yeah. Top 10 horses <laughs> Yay! Did you enjoy that, uh, the Pro there? Yeah, I enjoyed like the, the, the PWO. Yeah, yeah, Pepe were, oh, of course, Pepe at the top there. I mean, to order. be fair, they'd be more over than the Luo. <laughs> <laughs> what you listening to, son? I don't think you like it. Well, why not? I like this new generation of music. It's all toilet sounds. Uh, yeah, this match, holy shit, nothing happens. Chavo denies a breath's rope, gut wrench, suplex. That was never happening. Goes for a top rope sunset flip. Takes too long with Pepe, so it's reversed, and Kidman folds him up to retain. He's got the horse in a sunset flip. Kidman, one, two. He got him there. He got him. Oh, man. Eddie comes out and says, hey, you want to join the Luo? Stop losing and earn it. You're not cutting it, bro. You're a Guerrero, you're supposed to be the top. And Chavo's like, I don't want to join the Luo. <laughs> and he never would, as the LW would disband when Eddie got injured in January 99 with his car crash. But why, oh, shit. why does Chavo have to prove? Well, uh, the rest of these jobbers in the Luo were losing when they came. <laughs> so why yeah. does Chavo have to win? Uh, maybe because he's a Guerrero, please win a match. Oh, okay. you know? yeah, yeah. He's got, I've got my prize. Brother, <laughs> your father's blood. <laughs> What was the plan for the NWO versus One Warrior Nation storyline? Where was it going when you left? Did you have any idea? <laughs> In the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Where the bitch went. I don't know. I mean, it just became ridiculous when the LWO, right. Latino <laughs> World Order. Ernest Miller versus Villano 5. Now listen here. By law, I got to tell you this. My hands and feet are registered weapons. All right, so, you know, Ernest Miller batters a jobber. Oh, not Ernest Miller. Do you think his ma would like to hear about this? Would his ma appreciate getting called at whatever, five past nine? I would I, imagine. I batted Villano five. She would block a lot of numbers. <laughs> or she would divert the calls back to Miller. <laughs> and so when someone says, call my mama, he's like, hello? He's like, is this your mama? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a shame because they had a couple of bits on Nitro where Jackie Chan, hey, Jackie Chan, what are you doing on the set of Rush Era 2? And that WCW were trying to get an angle between Jackie Chan and Ernest Miller. And no. <laughs> He's just having none of it. No, it's just, no. My little eight-year-old son is taller than Jackie Chan. I'll kick his head off. It yeah. should have been Chuck Norris. I reckon Chuck would have been up for a payday to come in and do something. We can't give you Chuck Norris. We'll give you Mike Norris. That's my finger. Let it do you puke. Ow. Many offensive weapons he has. We'll find out. Here he goes. Oh! There's that round kick of his. He calls it the feed liner, I guess. And it puts the out of five away. Diamond Dallas Page. The penultimate matchup is Scott versus Steve. Lone Wolf, Wolf, Scott Hall versus Borrowed Finley's Gear, Steve Armstrong. Oh my god, is I've never seen a clothed man look more naked than this Ooh, fellow. Go on, do tell. Because he's okay, so he's <laughs> You know I, I've always find it fascinating when people wear clothes but are more naked than they would be if they weren't wearing clothes. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Okay, so he's got a green onesie on, right? Yeah. But it's not the like rhino onesie where it covers loads. It's like a amateur grappling onesie. Yeah, like where a, it's very low cut. Yeah, yeah. And then the cut for like the groin is just like a regular pair of jocks. So they come up right to his groin. It's cut down to his belly and oh, it doesn't yeah. even cover up his nipples. And <laughs> the icing on top, guys. And I will fight this tooth and nail. I think a wrestler who doesn't wear knee pads 
looks more naked than if a dude whips his fucking flute out. <laughs> yes, agreed. 100%. So, this dude looks like can birthday I, suit boy. Can, can I add one more accessory to make him look even more naked? Yes. Baseball cap. Ooh. I'm telling you. Yeah? Like, find Eric Young wearing a baseball cap in his wrestling gear in TNA. Okay. Like, he was bearded at the time, so it was like, do you remember he was the leader in, in of... Insanity, sanity? No. Oh, the world elite or whatever? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, wow. I think he was in that faction. He was definitely wearing yellow, okay. yellow jocks, yellow boots, baseball cap. I'm telling you, most naked man I've ever seen. <laughs> I think it's because the cap denotes that you've finished getting dressed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is your, you're heading to the shops. Like, Oh, because yeah. the cap would be the last thing you put yeah, on. Exactly. You're heading yeah. to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is professional journalism there this, this, is, <laughs> this is it this is the breakdown the people who see. look naked and are wearing clothes <laughs> I don't think there's any denying that uh, Steve Armstrong is an accomplished pro wrestler but there's the uh, talk of that Armstrong curse that's haunted the entire Armstrong family that I really don't believe this is a nothing squash match. Slap you in the back of the head, Steve Armstrong. Commentators make reference to the Armstrong curse. I was like, huh, what is it? Uh, Bullet Bob Armstrong, the da. <coughs> remember him, him, him and TNA showed up for a little bit. Uh, he was pretty successful in the 60s and 70s and in the Southeastern Territories, Georgia, Mid-South. Actually toured overseas in Japan and Korea as well. He had four sons who were all in wrestling. So, like, that's a huge wrestling family, you know. Brad, Scott, Steve and Brian, who, you know, uh, history will dictate, did not have much success in wrestling, apart from one of them. Brad was the technical dude, Scott the powerhouse, Steve the ladies' man, and Brian, who was the youngest, was the most charismatic. Grand on the territories, but went downhill in WCW. Brad even got a title. Scott tagged in the Young Pistols, but they were all shuffled down to preliminary talent. Brad himself coined the Armstrong curse, that phrase, which Zabisco picked up on and it became a running gag where the lads did have a match, but eventually they'd lose. I'll tell you, I don't think Brad's getting up for a while after that one. Texas death match. Exactly right. This is five, four, three title law on the line this night in Pensacola. And one of them's a Texas death match. Ron Fuller, you long, tall drink of water. I'm going to tie your legs and knots and cut you down to size and have my way with it. What happened to them? Brad bowed out after an knee injury. Steve went to the WWF, but as a jobber, Scott turned to referee. Ha <laughs> ha. And Brian jumped ship to the WWF as the roadie. Ain't he great? Yeah! Uh, it wasn't going great, but then he was repackaged as the road dog, allowed the mic, and tagged with Billy Gunn. And now the Outlaws are one of the biggest, most well-remembered tag teams in wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. The roadie, he actually wore a t-shirt that said, look mom, no more curse. Yeah, mm, that's cool. That's, nice. that's cool. Yeah, because he broke uh, it. Was there was there ever a man in wrestling who did more than Road Dog did with his talent? He was absolutely fine. But if you saw him when he came in as the roadie, you're like, yeah, jobber. That's it, yeah. jobber. And he did so much. Fair play to him. Yeah, uh, so well done. Yeah, putting that running gag to rest. Back to the match. Aw, <laughs> Steve eats a razor's edge, and then eats another razor's edge later. Gator. Ah. <laughs> And it's time for your Thunder main event. your thunder man uh, <laughs> it's the giant versus raven with canyon the nwo's measuring stick versus guy on a losing streak <laughs> he gets swatted away eat a big boot ah oh, come on raven he ecw's it up and sets up a table in the ring you'll never guess who goes through <laughs> it and how <laughs> uh, giant choke slams raven through the table one two three waka wahey hey Oh, 
Whack away here. Holy fuck. Thunder is such a pointless TV show. Like, this is not, is this not in 98, the peak? Yeah. But, th- like, nothing happens. Like, even when they have big names and big matches on it, you're guaranteed that they're either going to be short, shit, or have a bollocks finish. <laughs> Or all three. <laughs> it's the unholy fucking trinity, you know? Where's Horace? We needed Horace. He could have saved things. <laughs> Was he on the show? No. No. So, well, That's what are it you then. Doing? That's it. <laughs> He's already been left off the curtain. <laughs> you couldn't make the cut for Thunder. <laughs> he, he did have a backstage blast uh, oh. promo the next week. Mm. Uh, what was he saying? Backstage blast. He's talking to uh, Jimmy. 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 So Jimmy calls him out for having done nothing, says that he rode on Raven's coattails, and then when that didn't work and he was free, he did nothing, and then he hitched his trailer to Hogan, and he's probably... <laughs> <a> shoot trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not going to do anything. And he basically says, what have you done? What have you done to earn your place in this group? And then Horace says, listen here. I worked in Japan for eight years. As a commie chef. And I'm (laughs) very good. And I'm telling you that I could beat any wrestler in WCW if they just gave me the chance. And then Jimmy calls him out on that again. He said, well, you know, we've been watching you for a while and you haven't really beaten anyone. (laughs) (laughs) And then Horace is like, listen here, Jimmy, you're getting on on my nerves now. Uh, I'll I'll wrestle you. You better... (laughs) Watch your mouth, Jimmy. <laughs> he gets jobbed out. <laughs> he does. He gets jobbed out. And then that's it. You know, and then <laughs> the Jimmy's Jimmy like, thing. oh, I'm afraid that's our time up. We've got to go back to Tony the Tiger here. And he's going <laughs> to chat about other things better than you. <laughs> <laughs> he gets <laughs> bitched <laughs> out. It's so bad. <laughs> Horace. <laughs> the no, Horace Hogan. The Horace Mr. Hogan. 1998. <laughs> I'll check the book you rock <laughs> the calendar. <laughs> when you were growing up as a nephew of Hulk Hogan, a Hollywood Hogan, I cannot see that as being a real close relationship. Uh, we're all of a sudden at this point to fruition. Well, I'll tell you what, he's been wrestling a long time and it's been a long distance relationship. Fuck. Horace Hogan, that's... <laughs> it's just... It's blow after blow. <laughs> <laughs> after the Nitro Blast, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> Because you're technically not on television. <laughs> <laughs> so that does it for <laughs> the end. <laughs> oh, end. Bomb <laughs> uh, the end of the Warrior arc for OSW. How do you think that one went, mate? I had great fun talking about it. Got a bit sick of the DQ towards the end, mm. but you know, I had loads of fun. Total bollocks. WCW is uh, a fascinating company. We'll take a break, but we'll be back to it at some point, I'm sure. Mm. It was kind of sad. It worked out that you know when they turn around and they they ship off Warrior. It's like okay, so Hogan just wanted his win then, didn't he? It was like, well, they need it because you bombed me. <laughs> Come on, what do you think, Ozzy? Did you enjoy that one? Uh, very nice, sir. Very nice. Very yeah. good. What do you think the the glory's hole there? The hole there. The glory uh, hole. Uh, it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, we covered a lot of Warrior now. Mm. Almost everything. Almost, uh, we're missing. Oh, we did a bit of Orlando Jordan as well in last show. Yeah. Uh, what are, we are missing his 96. 96. Yeah. Come that, back. The, yeah that's the, it. the baseball cap run. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's a solid. You know, we, <laughs> like of a thing we haven't covered but mention all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the baseball cap. <laughs> I even had artwork of it made. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. It's the perfect time of an era to examine because it's so hot. So many big stars, so many terrible decisions <laughs> as well. So there's a load of bollocks, load of great made event sharks, and load of uh, mid card greatness. It's just a shame they weren't showcased anywhere near the talent. Like we're watching load of Dino, load of Eddie, and they're doing nothing. And like, come on, man. Oh yeah, fantastic. Enjoy that one. So next up is the Golden Nogger Awards, which we'll talk about hot dog, everything from the end of the new generation arc. And then, sir, at the end of that, we will reveal our new story arc, which will see us the rest of 2022. And beyond. Yeah, what could it be? Who knows? So you can watch this again if you like, or the other 107 episodes. Oh, fuck! Free of charge at OSWReview.com. 
Yeah, and if forward slash episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, well done, sir. You just, you just removed the click. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to buy, shower us with uh, some delicious chocolate, like toffee crisps, boosts, catch bars, dairy milk, any other chocolates that you you, you know you'd someone like is showered with. Someone's going to be like, that's the same bar as you said at the end of the last show. Yeah. Shut up or I'll send Horace Hogan after you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can slip us a couple of books at noggeru.osw.review.com. So it's a goodbye from B1. Take a boo, lads. And myself, still two and a half time Golden Nugger Award winner, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're not worried. Our customers buy Hogan for its robust taste, not its alcoholic content. I predict our new alcohol-free Horse Hogan will sell even better than our previous brand. Well, that's the end of me.